And Syria is becoming a haven for radical extremists with aspirations to launch terrorist attacks against the U.S. That's exactly what a top intelligence official told Congress yesterday. Here's what the director of national intelligence, James Clapper, told the Senate Intelligence Committee. Tremendous concern here for these um, extremists who are attracted to um, Syria, engage in combat, get training, and we're seeing now the um, appearance of training complexes in Syria to train people to go back to their countries uh, and, um, and con of course, uh, conduct more terrorist acts. So Clapper says that between 75,000 and 110,000 rebels are battling the government in Syria. Of those, 26,000 are extremists. And he says about 7,000 of them are foreigners from 50 different countries, including Europe and the Middle East. U.S. intelligence officials have expressed worry that a handful of American foreign fighters and hundreds of European militants have already returned to their home countries. So might all of this change the U.S. course of action in Syria? For some insight on that, I'm joined by Ahmed Fatih, a Middle East analyst. Thanks for joining me, Ahmed. Thank you, Amira, for having me. So Clapper says Syria is becoming a haven for radical extremists from all over the world. Is that something Americans should really be concerned about? Absolutely. The American government should be very concerned about what's happening in Syria. And uh, on the other side, it is not a uh, surprise. This is a uh, standard operating procedures for Al Qaeda and its affiliates. We have seen it over and over again. We have seen it in Afghanistan. We have seen it in Pakistan, in the Feta area, uh, the federally uh, administered tribal areas. We have seen it before in the uh, 80s in the Sudan when Bin Laden went there and established training camps. And we saw it in Iraq in, from 2003 onward. So it's an ongoing, it's part of their operating procedure. They get a foothold on the ground and then they start to develop from there. So definitely U.S. intelligence community and security apparatus should be very, very concerned. Mm -hmm. And Ahmed, Ahmed, some analysts have said that it's possible opposition militants will, will tire of battling the government, which is showing no signs of collapse, and instead take their newly acquired skills back to Europe or, or to the U.S., where acts of terror may be able to grab larger headlines. Is this about actually shifting their, their target or expanding their targets abroad? Uh, this is definitely a valid scenario, uh, that these uh, terrorists uh, are going to be, uh, at the end, going back to their countries, whether they are going to be carrying out uh, operations by themselves or they are going to be training others without the need to leave the country. We have heard in Europe, in many European countries, in Britain, in Germany, in Belgium, about the uh, jihad tourism. Uh, these people uh, just average uh, working and then they take vacation uh, months or so and then they, they flock to Syria. There have to be more uh, a vigilant uh, approach and more uh, careful screening at the countries bordering Syria. And I'm speaking here about Turkey, about Jordan, about Iraq, about who is coming in and where do you go after that. I'm sure that the uh, security uh, apparatus in Turkey or Jordan, for example, when they see this influx uh, of uh, young people and they all heading into the same direction to go to a border point crossing to Syria, this should be a red flag. I am uh, surprised that it's not uh, been uh, tackled earlier on. Well, Ahmed, uh, of course, the Syrian peace talks are ongoing in Geneva, but as we know, they've struggled a bit to actually get going off the ground. Would you say that this round of Geneva talks has helped bring the two sides any closer together? Uh, the first round in the Geneva talks uh, did nothing in terms of tangible results. It only brought the two sides to agree to sit with each other. Maybe it's the early stages of the negotiations. I'm not expecting that uh, the dispute that's been going on and the civil war that's been going on for three years is going to be solved in a week. But we hope that the humanitarian aid would reach to the affected areas inside Syria based on the promises that the Syrian regime have made. Unfortunately, this has just have been uh, talk. 
uh, still the uh, the aid agencies are not able to reach to the areas affected. They are not able to distribute uh, the food uh, uh, rations that much needed in areas like homes, for example. Uh, and uh, I think, I hope uh, that in the next round, some uh, details would, could be ironed between the two sides, but I'm not expecting a breakthrough early on. A quick follow-up on that. Do you think the next round, uh, Lakhdar Brahimi, the special UN envoy, says they should be more productive in the next round? Do you, do you see any more productivity coming? <coughs> It's only hopes. Uh, I share Lakhdar Brahimi hopes uh, of being more productive in the second round, but it have to have uh, two willing uh, and able sides to negotiate and the political will. Uh, from what I have seen uh, so far, uh, the Syrian regime is trying to uh, waste the time uh, in uh, rhetoric mostly, uh, and it's, it's a difficult process. Negotiation uh, is not an easy task to undertake. We'll, we'll have to see if that rhetoric turns into action. Ahmed Fatih, a Mil Middle East analyst, thank you. Thank you, Amira.